um, you must sign up by May 28th uh, so the tickets can be ordered. Uh, tickets are $18, and if you need, uh, and they need to be paid when you sign up. So give the money to Judy Peacock. And also, um, bring items for the camp next Sunday. Um, the list is on the sheet in the bulletin. And That's all. Yeah. Okay. There are little trinkets hanging up out there for the for the mothers. After the service, be sure to get one. Good morning. Woo! <laughs> Welcome to uh, Kimberlin Creek this morning. We're glad you're here with us. Um, a lot of prayer concerns this morning. Um, family of Opal Kearns family of Connie Rinchler and the family of Troy Fletcher. Um, be praying for uh, Susan. She has kidney stones. Don Abbott has heart issues. Bob Hine uh, is on the liver transplant list. Um, Jason Hines is traveling to Germany today for work. Uh, Carla Gross and Jessica Craig had an ear replacement but is still having some issues. Other prayer concerns this morning? Aiden? Okay, will you keep your mom in prayer? Dixie? Tony Terrell? Okay. Sis? Kelsey Tropper? Your granddaughter? Okay. Others? All right, let's get to praises then. A lot of praises um, on the list this morning as well. Um, there'll be a new Sunday school class starting soon for young adults. So if there's a young adult in your life, um, get with Stephen Spicer and he'll uh, point you in the right direction. Um, for the beautiful weather, um, for all mothers, happy Mother's Day to all mothers and all women who have been a mother figure to somebody in your life. Uh, Karen Joyce had a great trip and having family close to be helpful. How else can we praise God this morning? Aiden? Okay, that's your mom's going to rehab. Good. Judy? Yeah, it's good to see Miss Janice this morning. Mickey? Praise God. Praise God. Other praises this morning. All right. If not, let's go to our Lord in prayer. Our gracious God and Heavenly Father, we just thank you that we can come to your house this morning and worship and praise you. God, we just thank you for who you are and what you do in our lives day in and day out. God, there are so many reasons to praise you. Sometimes we just... We just gloss over them and we forget. But God, we just thank you for all the good things that you give us. And God, we even thank you for, for the hard times because during the hard times, we learn to rely on you even more. God, we know you are the unmovable mountain that will always be standing right there next to us. And we just praise you for that. Through the good and the bad, you are always there. God, there are so many on our prayer concern list this morning. God, we know that there are so many so close to our heart, some that we can't even say out loud. God, maybe it's the, the loss of a loved one. Maybe that loss was this last week. Maybe the loss was many years ago. God, we just 
pray for those who still have that emptiness in their heart. God, we know that nothing can fill that emptiness but you. And so, God, I just pray that you fill the lives of those who, who are mourning this, this morning, for those who are, are sick, for those who are hurting, for those who are brokenhearted. Because, God, you, you promised to send the great comforter. And we know that we are never alone. God, we pray for those who need healing, for those who are unsure about waiting on test results, for those who, who don't know where the next step are, where the next step is. God, we know that you are the great physician. We know that you can send healing that only you can do. God, we pray for the doctors and the nurses who, who are, are helping those in those times of need. God, we know that you gave the wisdom to be able to heal our bodies, and we just thank you and praise you for that. God, this morning as we come into a time of worship, a time of returning your tithes and your offerings back to you, as we literally come to your altar to leave our offerings, may it be a true sign of our love for you. May we give back as you have given to us. God, that's a debt that is unrepayable. May we just return a small token of that in thanks to you this morning. And God, may you give us the wisdom as your church to use that money for the furthering of your kingdom, not only here in our congregation, but to a dying world. God, may we be your hands and feet to the sick, to the poor, to the hurting. God, we thank you and praise you for who you are and what you do day in and day out. And God, most importantly, we thank you for the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. God, we thank you that he was willing to die a death that we deserved to take every bit of our sin, every bit of our wrongdoing, every bit of our missteps to the cross. God, and nail them and leave them there. And God, we thank you that he didn't stay dead, but he rose and he rose three days later, victorious over death, hell, and the grave. And he is now seated at the right hand of you, interceding on our behalf. And we thank you and praise you. It's in Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Happy Mother's Day. This morning, we're going to start out with a song that may be unfamiliar to you. Several years ago, there was a young couple, Keith and Karen Getty. And they realized that the church had become more professionalized in its worship than it was corporate in its worship. Nothing wrong with that, but they said, we want to bring songs to the congregation that are new and that are singable. And this morning, we'd like for you to stand and join us as we sing Living Waters. Are you thirsty? Oh 
thank you this morning. We thank you for the continued blessings that you give us. We thank you for the mothers and for the women in our lives that have just done huge things for us, God. Loved us when we're unlovable, guided us when we needed it, corrected us when we needed it. And God, that we know that we've got those mothers in our lives because of who you are in their lives. God, that we pray that you will continue to do a work with each person this morning. God, that they hear the word that's spoken. They hear you and they proclaim you in not just today, but in every day of their life. God, that we just thank you for what you're doing in this church. Help us to be the church that is not in these four walls, God but in the church of the community and the church of the world and you're stretching us and guiding us and moving us to touch our neighbor, to our family member, to our coworkers, God, that they can see you in each of us. God, that we thank you for Jesus and his sacrifice that Lord, that he gave his all so that we can one day live with you in heaven. God, we just thank you and praise you for the continued blessings and in Jesus' precious name we pray, amen. When the best of me is barely breathing When I'm not somebody I believe in Hold on to me When I miss the light, the night is stolen When I'm slamming all the Doors you've opened, hold on to me. Hold on to me. Hold on to me when it's too dark to see you. When I am sure. I'm tired of all my pretending Hold on to me When I start to break in desperation Underneath the weight of expectations Hold on Hold on to me Hold on to me When it's too dark to see you When I am sure could rest here in your arms forever cause I know nobody loves me better hold on to me hold on to me Thank you, Aubrey. If you would, turn in your Bibles this morning with me to the book of Acts. When 
When I was a kid, I always thought Acts was a funny name for a book in the Bible. But in some translations, it's actually called the Acts of the Apostles. <clears throat> We're going to see a little, about, a little bit about that this morning. Acts in chapter 9, beginning in verse 36. Now there was in Joppa a disciple named Tabitha, which translated means Dorcas. She was full of good works and acts of charity. In those days she became ill and died. And then when they had washed her, they laid her in an upper room. Since Lida was near Joppa, the disciples, hearing that Peter was there, sent two men to him, urging him, please, Come to us without delay. So Peter rose and went with them. And when he arrived, they took him to the upper room. All the widows stood beside him weeping and showing tunics and other garments that Dorcas made while she was with them. But Peter put them all outside and knelt down and prayed. And turning to the body, he said, Tabitha. Arise, and she opened her eyes. When she saw Peter, she sat up, and he gave her his hand and raised her up. Then, calling the saints and widows, he presented her alive. And it became known throughout all Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. And he stayed in Joppa for many days with one Simon, a tanner. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. <clears throat> One of the hardest responsibilities of a pastor is to stand next to the casket as mourners file out of a funeral service. I've had the honor of preaching one funeral. But I know as my ministry continues, there will be many more. It's an honor to be asked to give the final words of someone's life. However, it is also very difficult. It's not something that a pastor just gets used to or becomes hardened to. Most pastors learn to grieve differently. We've all experienced death in one sense or another. We've lost a trusted friend, a companion, someone who meant the world to us. Over the last 10 years or so, we have lost many pillars of our church community. Men and women who exemplified the meaning of Christian servanthood. Those whose lives touched those around them just by being present. Men and women who were here every day, every time that the church building doors were open, who gave of themselves for the betterment of their church and for others. Men and women who, even though we now know they are receiving their full reward from the, the one they, they lived their life serving, we still feel that deep loss and pain when they left. I read something just the other day <clears throat> about a funeral where not one person in the room cried. The mother of the man tried to show some tears, but she couldn't find them. Now, I don't know the story of the man, this man's life, but to hear of a funeral where no one cries is honestly quite sad in itself. This morning, I want to ask the question, when you die, will people cry? What legacy are you leaving behind? As we begin our passage this morning, 
we see the church in Joppa suffering a similar loss. Tabitha, or Dorcas in the Greek, has died. Now, this is the only place in Scripture where we see mention of Tabitha. What makes her death worthy of being included in Holy Scripture? We learn from verse 36 that Tabitha is a disciple. What is a disciple? A disciple is a learner. We know this term refers to followers of Christ throughout all of the New Testament. A term that should refer to us, those who have received the gift of God's grace through Jesus Christ. Let's look at a couple passages. In John 8, 31 and 32, we see Jesus giving one example of how a disciple is to live. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. And you will know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And then in Luke 14, 27, whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. We see that the true disciples live daily in God's word and they are willing to lay down their life for Christ's sake. True disciples put God and his church first in their life. Now, that's a radical thing, because in our society today, we think that family is number one. Folks, I'm telling you, God should be number one in your life. If God is number one, every other aspect of your life will fall into place. We see this in Tabitha. We see that in her description, but also in the reaction of those, the lives that she touched. And if you go back to the Greek, there's something even more important here. The word disciple used to describe Tabitha here in Scripture is the feminine use of the word. Now, if you've ever studied any other foreign language, you know there are feminine and masculine um, types of um, di- many different words in other languages. The English language is kind of boring compared to other languages. Um, But this is the feminine use of the word disciple. Now, if you were to study and look throughout the entire New Testament, this is the only place in all of the New Testament that disciple is used in the feminine. And there are disciples described throughout the New Testament, men and women. It's obvious that Tabitha loved and served the Lord with her entire being. Luke, the writer of Acts, makes a point to his readers that Tabitha is different. Her impact was far-reaching. She made a difference in the lives of everybody she came in contact with. I want you to notice that Tabitha didn't just do works, good works and acts of charity. She was full of good works and acts of charity. This was her life. She didn't just come to play church. She didn't just go to do good work so she can earn that that scout badge. Her life was the good works and the charity she did. She didn't just attend worship on Sunday mornings for an hour and live the rest of her life the way she wanted to. Tabitha's faith impacted every single aspect of her life. Everything she did, she did for the Lord. When you interact with your coworkers, do they see your faith? When you go to lunch here in a little bit and your server messes up your order, are they going to see your faith? When a brother or sister in the faith does you wrong, Do they see your faith? Moving into verse 37, we see tragedy strike as Tabitha falls ill and dies. 
Now, we don't know the circumstances. We don't know how old Tabitha is. But after she dies, she is washed, which was customary, however, not buried. And this was not usual. Coming from the Jewish culture into the Christian culture, there was still a lot of hangover from what the Jews did. And the Jews, once somebody died, it was time to bury. That person, they, they didn't want to have anything to do with death. So it is very unusual that Tabitha was not buried immediately. It seems as though the people around here already had the faith that something could be done. That, that possibly could Tabitha be, be raised from the dead? They've heard, they've heard stories about how Jesus had done that. And I'm sure they knew. I know technology was not the same then as it is today. But if Peter, one of the 12, is just about 10 miles away, I'm sure the church in Joppa knew. They had to know that Peter, the one that Jesus said he would place, be the rock of his church, they knew that Peter was close. And, and if we look just before, we see where Peter had healed a man in Lydda. And I'm sure word travels fast. Whether we have technology or not, People like to talk. So the disciples in Joppa run to Peter. They go and send for Peter to come and do something for this woman who has died. Again, this speaks of the importance of Tabitha in this church community. She had touched so many lives. And when they reach Peter, he comes with them without hesitation. Now, when Peter arrives, he is met with all of the women showing him all the items that Tabitha had made them. The verb here in the Greek literally means they were wearing what Tabitha had made. The very clothes on their back is what Tabitha had made for them. These women were broken. Their hearts were broken. Tabitha had obviously meant a great deal to them on their Christian walk. They stood around Peter, Peter hopeful that he could perform some kind of miracle. You know, this is the man who has healed in the name of Jesus. They had just heard about it. He is a disciple of Jesus. He walked with Jesus through his ministry. Surely he could raise Tabitha from the dead. Up to this point, this is not something Peter had ever accomplished. This is not something Peter had ever done. In Luke chapter 8, Peter is present when Jesus raises Jairus' daughter from the dead. So he has seen his master perform this miracle. And what does Jesus tell his disciples? The things that I have done, you will do greater things than I have done. So Peter asks the women to clear the room, just as he had saw Peter or Jesus do, and likely for a little privacy. While praying... He is able to raise Tabitha from the dead. He then reveals the risen Tabitha to all of the saints and all of the widows. And even more important, as we finish that chapter, many believed because of the mighty works Peter had performed in the name of Jesus Christ. You see, Tabitha had touched the lives of everyone that she had encountered through her good works. It is clear from our passage this morning, and it, it reminds me of a few passages. First in Galatians chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. And let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So then, as we have the opportunity... Let us do good 
to everyone. And especially to those who are of the household of the faith. You see, I don't believe that Tabitha served the Lord the way she did through her good works just because she knew she was going to get a reward in heaven. She didn't do her good works to try to earn her way into heaven. You see, she knew that it was the grace of God that earned her salvation. She did her good works because of something inside of her, something that God had placed inside of her, something that we should all have inside of us if we have Christ as our Savior. And notice Paul tells us one day that we'll reap the reward for the good that we do. He also reminds us to do good to everyone especially our brothers and sisters in Christ. Are we always good to those that we worship and serve with? In Hebrews 13, 16, it tells us, do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Doing good is pleasing to God. We should be good to all people no matter, for no other reason than to please God. And notice that the writer of Hebrews even understands that being good to all people will require sacrifice. It requires sacrifice to be good to the snippy receptionist at the doctor's office. It requires sacrifice to be good to the rude neighbor who causes all the issues in your neighborhood. It requires sacrifice to be good to the people that we do not like. That every time we hear their voice, it's like nails on a chalkboard. To those people who push our buttons and get on our very last nerve. But isn't that sacrifice worth it? when compared to the sacrifice Christ made on the cross. James chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. But he gives more grace. Therefore, it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Did you know that we are to show the same kind of grace to others that Christ shows to us? That is hard. That's something that I've been struggling with personally for the last couple of months. James, however, gives us hope. God will provide more grace where grace is needed. Tabitha understood this sacrificial grace. How will you be full of good works like Tabitha? We also see that Tabitha was full of acts of charity. This reference here seems that Tabitha may have been fairly wealthy for that day and time for a woman. Acts 20, 35 says, In all things I have shown you that by working hard in this way, we must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus. How he himself said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. And in 1 John 3, 17 and 18, But if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. We should be giving generously to those in need. Folks, we live in the richest country in the entire world. We have more than any other people group in history. Did you know that most of the social programs that are now funded by our government started with the local church? 
When did we become so reliant on someone else to take care of us? We, the people of God, should be going out and taking care of the poor, the needy, the destitute, the orphans, and the widows, the prisoners. You know, when I think about it, I feel like there might be a verse about that somewhere. Matthew 25, if you're wondering. This morning, we have looked at the life of one woman, one woman that gets less than 10 verses, who seemingly touched the lives of everyone she encountered. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a job to do. It doesn't matter if you're nine or you're 90. God has a job for you. We are to show good works to all of those that we encounter. We are to show sacrificial grace to even those that we feel do not deserve it. We are to be gracious and charitable to those in need. Why? If for no other reason than to please God himself. But it should come from a deep desire to love others. Because of the love of Christ that has been placed inside of us. Tabitha had a desire to love others. Folks, I don't know where your heart is this morning. I don't know if it has become hard because of all the hate and distress in this broken and terrible world we live in. I don't know if you have had people that have used you, abused you, or walked all over you. Wherever you are, it's time to let Jesus do the healing. So you can be his hands and feet to a dying desperate world. At the beginning of my message, I asked, will people cry when you die? I hope that I've made an impact with my life. I know I've done a lot of wrong. But I hope I've done a little bit of good too. What kind of legacy are you leaving for your children your grandchildren, your nieces, your nephews, the youth in your community and right here in our own church? Do they see a legacy of good works and acts of charity to follow? Tabitha had left such a legacy that she is forever remembered in God's holy word. If someone were writing a new book to put in to scripture would your story be one that had made such an impact it would be recorded down Jesus has called us to a higher standard will we will you will I answer his call Will you pray with me? God, we live in a broken world. God, we live in a world that needs you. God, may we finally put ourselves aside to put others first. If no other reason than to please you, but God, it should come from within. God, we should be the hands and feet to each other here in our community of faith. But we should also be your hands and feet to our neighbors, our friends, our family, our co-workers, to every person we encounter. We should be full of good works and acts of charity. God, I pray this morning that 
when it's our time to cross over and this shell of a body is, is laying in a casket that people remember that we were someone of faith. That we touched the lives of everyone we encountered. May we be like Tabitha. May our faith in you impact every aspect of our life. God, this morning, I thank you for all of the mothers. And God, I, I thank you for the women who, maybe they don't have any children of their own, but they are making and have made an impact on young lives. God, I personally thank you for all of the women in my life that have guided me and directed me to where I am today. God, may you continue to empower us to be your people. I ask all this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. As our musicians come, will you stand? The altars are open this morning. Maybe you would like to pray with me. I'm here. Maybe you just need to come to the altar and kneel in, in front of your Savior and say, God, I need to leave these burdens here. Maybe you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Folks, today is the day. I am ready to pray with you and help you meet the greatest gift that was ever given. Maybe you're needing a church home. Maybe you've, you've been searching for some place that you can find love and that you can serve with. Today's the day. As we sing, come.
people said amen. amen mothers women that at the back today Tristan and Kairu will be back there handing out gifts from Pastor Tim for all of the women so make sure you grab one of those from Tristan or Kyrie um, we thank you mothers for the gift that you have given each of us we thank you women who have touched our lives in ways that made a difference. So as we go forth today, can we be a Tabitha? Can we show good works and acts of charity to those we encounter? Have a good week. We are one in the bond of love. We are one in the bond of love. We have joined our spirit with the Spirit of God, we are one.